The lecture is in two parts. In the first part, we shall discuss about biomass energy. In the second part, we shall discuss about nuclear energy. Here is a map showing distribution of the world's terrestrial biomes from 1992 to 2015, including sparse in yellow color, tundra in blue color, boreal low in light green color, boreal forest in dark green, temperate low in olive green, temperate forest in black color, drylands in orange color, tropical low in turquoise, tropical forest in blue color, and bare spaces in gray color. Biomass is any organic material which has stored sunlight in the form of chemical energy. As a fuel, it may include wood, wood waste, straw, and other crop residues, manure, sugarcane, and many other byproducts from a variety of agricultural processes. Manure, garden waste, and crop residues are all sources of biomass. Biomass make a renewable energy source based on carbon cycle, unlike other natural resources such as petroleum, coal, and nuclear fuels. Another source includes animal waste, which is a persistent and unavoidable pollutant produced primarily by the animals housed in industrial sized farms. Bioenergy is renewable energy made available from materials derived from biological sources that is the material derived from recently living organisms which include plants animals and their byproducts here in this collage of pictures we can see some sources from biomass these are wood pellet wood cow dung bagasse straw bales biochar wood pellets and charcoal Charcoal is a derivative of wood, was traditionally an important fuel in iron making and other processes. Biochar is charcoal, used as a soil amendment for both carbon sequestration and soil health benefits. Biochar is a stable solid, rich in carbon and can endure in soil for thousands of years. Like most charcoal, biochar is made from biomass via pyrolysis. Biochar is under investigation as a viable approach for carbon sequestration as it has a potential to help mitigate global warming and climate change. It results from process related to pyrogenic carbon capture and storage. First in the list of biomass energy, we shall discuss about biogas. Biogas is the mixture of gases produced by the breakdown of organic matter in the absence of oxygen anaerobically, primarily consisting of methane and carbon dioxide. Biogas can be produced from raw materials such as agricultural waste, manure, municipal waste, plant material, sewage, green waste and food waste. Biogas is a renewable energy source. Biogas is produced by anaerobic digestion with methanogen or anaerobic organisms which digest the waste material inside a closed system or fermentation of biodegradable materials. This closed system is called anaerobic digester, biodigester or bioreactor. Here is presented a simple sketch of household biogas plant. Biogas is primarily methane that is CH4, carbon dioxide that is CO2, nitrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide and oxygen in small amounts. It also contains moisture and siloxanes. The gases methane, hydrogen and carbon monoxide can be combusted or oxidized with oxygen. 
This energy release allows biogas to be used as a fuel. It can be used for any heating purpose such as cooking. It can also be used in a gas engine to convert the energy in the gas into electricity and heat. Biogas can be compressed after removal of carbon dioxide. The same way as natural gas is compressed to CNG and used to power motor vehicles. In the United Kingdom, for example, biogas is estimated to have the potential to replace around 17% of vehicle fuel. It qualifies for renewable energy subs subsidies in some part of the world. Biogas can be cleaned and upgraded to natural gas standards when it becomes biomethane. Biogas is considered to be a renewable source because its production and use cycle is continuous and it generates no net carbon dioxide. As the organic material grows, it is converted and used. It then grows, regrows in a continually repeating cycle. From a carbon perspective, as much carbon dioxide is absorbed from the atmosphere in the growth phase of the primary bioresource as it is released when the material is ultimately converted into energy. Biogas is produced by microorganisms such as methanogens and sulfur reducing bacteria performing anaerobic respiration. Biogas can refer to gas produced naturally or industrially. It is produced naturally in marshlands and artificially by biogas plants and in industries as shown in the picture. The purpose of industrial biogas is collection of biomethane, usually for fuel. Industrial biogas is produced either. As the biogas plant is the name often given to an anaerobic digester that treats farm waste or energy crops. It can be produced using anaerobic digester, that is, airtight tanks with different configurations. One schematic diagram is shown here. These plants can be fed with energy crops such as maize, sludge, or biodegradable waste, including sewage sludge and food waste. During the process, the microorganisms transform biomass waste into biogas, mainly methane and carbon dioxide, and digestate. Higher qualities of biogas can be produced when the wastewater is co-digested with other residuals from the dairy industry, sugar industry or brewery industry. For example, while mixing 90% of wastewater from beer industry with 10% cow whey, the production of biogas was recorded to increase by 2.5 times compared to the biogas produced by wastewater from the brewery only. Here in this picture is shown a business model for sustainable dairy digester system. A dairy farm of 3000 lactating dairy cows which produce milk with annual production of 60 million pounds or 7 million gallons of milk to be marketed as nutrient rich dairy products or milk as such produces the waste also called manure to be digested in an anaerobic digester of 750 kilowatt power. This can produce clean renewable energy of 5 million kilowatt hour to power nearly 700 homes and annual revenue worth $400,000. Apart from this, it can produce renewable energy credits of 5 million and annual revenue of worth $50,000. Besides this, it produces the byproduct to be converted into crop fertilizer of worth $300,000 and bedding of worth $100,000. The organic waste produced by these anaerobic digesters 
can be marketed as or organic manure to enrich the garden soil to make the soil more fertile bioenergy to be produced at industrial scale for commercial purpose need power station or power plant here in this picture is shown a chp power station using wood to supply 30000 households in france another picture is of a sugar ethanol plant located at piracicaba sao paulo state in brazil this plant produces the electricity it needs from bagasse residuals from sugar cane left over by milling process and it sells the surplus electricity to the power public grid now another term comes in the category of bioenergy is biofuels biomass is one of the few renewable resources for transportation fuels biofuels produce fewer emission than petroleum fuels the two main types of biofuels are ethanol and biodiesel the use of ethanol as a motor fuel has a long history as the car itself bioethanol is a renewable green fuel and can be produced from corn stalks rice straw and sugarcane and it can be used as a 10% blend with gasoline without need for any engine modification thus both the consumption of crude oil and the environmental pollution are reduced methanol and ethanol act as oxygenates when added to gasoline enhancing its octane value the oxygen present in the gasoline makes the total amount of oxygen from air and the oxygenates more relative to carbon and hydrogen and greatly reduces the moisture of harmful carbon dioxide the main steps in the ethanol production from corn is enzymatic hydrolysis the other resources are cellulose based biomass and heat chemicals which need pre treatment before it undergoes enzymatic hydrolysis this step is followed by fermentation by microbes the biomass from sugarcane juice or sugarcane ethanol or extraction post bagasse is subjected to the fermentation process directly this then leads to the product recovery and it produces lignin and other residuals to be used as manure the final distillation process gives bioethanol researchers are working with cellulosic ethanol and are trying to make the extraction of ethanol from sugarcane bagasse and other plants viable on the industrial scale the production of sugar and ethanol takes full advantage of the energy stored in sugarcane part of the bagasse is currently burned at the mill to provide the heat for distillation and electricity needs to run the machinery this allows ethanol plants to be energetically self sufficient and even sell surplus electricity to utilities current production is 600 megawatt that is 800000 horsepower for self use and 100 megawatt that is 130000 horsepower for sale next in the list is biodiesel biodiesel is a form of diesel fuel derived from plants and animals and consisting of long chain fatty acid esters it is typically made by chemically reacting lipids such as animal fat for example tallow soybean oil or some other vegetable oil with an alcohol producing a methyl ethyl or propyl ester unlike the vegetable and waste oil used to fuel converted diesel engines 
Biodiesel is a drop in biofuel, meaning it is compatible with existing diesel engines and distribution infrastructure. Biodiesel can be used alone or blended with petrol diesel in any proportion. Biodiesel blends can also be used as heating oil. Here is the picture of a biodiesel sample and below this is filtered waste vegetable oil that could be reacted with an alcohol to produce the ester. Here are some crops and some plant resources from which the oil samples are collected. The first in the list is Malaysia pinata. The inflorescence and seeds are shown here. The seeds produce the oil which could be used for the production of biodiesel. Here is another resource for biodiesel that is soybean oil, meals and bins. Varieties of soybean are considered to be an excellent source for producing biodiesel. Jetropa. This picture shows the plant Jetropa and its seeds from where the oil is extracted and can be used for preparing biodiesel. The next topic is gasification. Here is a picture showing Adler Diplomat 3 with gas generator of 1941. This is an apparatus where the process of gasification can be carried out. Gasification is a process that converts organic or fossil fuel based carbonaceous material into carbon monoxide, hydrogen and carbon dioxide. This is achieved by reacting the material at high temperatures above 700 degrees Celsius without combustion with a controlled amount of oxygen and or steam. The resulting gas mixture is called syngas or synthesis gas or producer gas and is a fuel itself. The power derived from gasification process and combustion of the resultant gas is considered to be a source of renewable energy if the gasified compounds were contained from biomass. The process of producing energy using the gasification method has been in use for more than 180 years. In the early time, coal and peat were used to power these plants. Initially developed to produce town gas for lighting and cooking in the 1800. This was replaced by electricity and natural gas in the later years and it was also used in blast furnaces. But the bigger role was played in the production of synthetic chemicals where it has been in use since the 1920s. During both the world wars, especially the World War II, the need for fuel produced by gasification re-emerged due to the shortage of petroleum. Wood gas generators called gasogene or gasogene were used to power motor vehicles in Europe. By the year 1945, there were trucks, buses and agricultural machines that were powered by gasification. It is estimated that there were close to 9 million vehicles running on producer gas all over the world. The gasification process is successfully carried out using a gasifier. Here are some gasifier types displayed. These types are updraft, downdraft, fluidized bed, interrained bed. In a 
gasifier, the carbonaceous material undergoes several different processes. The dehydration or drying process occurs at around 100 degrees Celsius. Typically, the resulting steam is mixed into the gas flow and may be involved with subsequent chemical reactions, notably the water gas reaction if the temperature is sufficiently high. The pyrolysis or devolatization process occurs at around 200 to 300 degrees Celsius. Volatiles are released and char is produced, resulting in up to 70% weight loss of the biomass. The process is dependent on the properties of the carbonaceous material and determines the structure and composition of the char, which will then undergo gasification reactions. The combustion process occurs at the volatile products and some of the char react with oxygen to primarily form carbon dioxide and small amounts of carbon monoxide which provides heat for the subsequent gasification reaction while letting carbon represent a carbon containing organic compound the basic reaction here is carbon plus oxygen to give out carbon dioxide. The gasification process occurs at as the char reacts with the steam and carbon dioxide to produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen. In addition, the reversible gas phase water gas shift reaction reaches equilibrium very fast at the temperature in a gasifier. This balances the concentration of carbon monoxide, steam, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. In essence, a limited amount of oxygen or air is introduced into the reactor to allow some of the organic materials to be burnt to produce carbon dioxide and energy. This drives a second reaction that converts further organic material to hydrogen and additional carbon dioxide. Further reactions occur when the formed carbon monoxide and residual water from the organic material react to form methane and excess carbon dioxide. This third reaction occurs more abundantly in reactors that increase the residence time of the reactive gases and organic materials as well as heat and pressure. Sometimes catalysts are also used in more sophisticated reactors to improve the reaction rates, thus moving the system closer to the reaction equilibrium for fixed residence time. In this picture is shown the steps involved in the production of clean fuel gas. The first step is fueling. The locally sourced wood waste including recycled clean wood construction and municipal tree trimmings is loaded into the fuel bin. The second step takes place in the gasifier where fuel enters the gasifier and goes through several stages including drying, pyrolysis, chemical change brought about by the heat and gasification. The wood is converted into synthetic syngas that can be used like the natural gas. The third step takes place in the oxidizer chamber. The syngas is conveyed into the oxidizer where it is combusted with the resulting flue gas directed through a boiler. The fourth step takes place in the boiler chamber where hot water from the boiler is transported by an underground pipe to provide heat and hot water for dockside buildings. The cold water then returns to the boiler to start the heating process. And the fifth steps take place at the ESP in which after exiting the boiler, the fuel gas is cleaned in the electrostatic precipitator that filters out virtually all the remaining particulate matter or fly ash. Here is a model showing in brief the usage of bioenergy for producing electricity and heating. 
Fuel is stored in a bunker for further transport to the boiler. In the boiler, water is heated to high temperature under pressure. The steam temperature can reach up to 550 degrees Celsius. Steam from the boiler powers the turbine which is connected to the generator. Steam that has passed through the turbine heats district heating water which is distributed through the district heating network's piping. A microbial electrolysis cell or MEC is a technology related to microbial fuel cells. While microbial fuel cells produce an electric current from microbial decomposition of organic compounds, which is essentially the sewage waste or sludge, microbial electrolysis cell partially reverses the process to generate hydrogen or methane from organic material by applying an electric current. The electric current would ideally be produced by a renewable source of power. The hydrogen or methane produced can be used to produce electricity by means of an additional PEM cell or internal combustion engine. A microbial electrolysis cell contains a few components as microorganisms. These are attached to the anode part of the cell. The identity of the microorganisms determines the product and efficiency of the MEC. Second is the materials, essentially the electrode materials that can be the same as MFC such as carbon cloth, carbon paper, graphite felt, graphite granules or graphite brushes. Platinum can be used as a catalyst to reduce the over potential required for the hydrogen production. The high cost of platinum is driving research to biocathodes as an alternative. Or as other alternative for catalyst, the stainless steel plates were used as cathodes and anode materials. Other materials include membranes, although some MECs are membraneless, and tubing and gas collecting systems. Electrogenic microorganisms consuming an energy source such as acetic acid release electrons and protons creating an electrical potential of up to 0.3 volts. In a conventional MFC or microbial fuel cell, this voltage is used to generate electrical power. In a MEC or microbial electrolysis cell, an additional voltage is supplied to the cell from the outside source. The combined voltage is sufficient to reduce protons producing hydrogen gas. Hydrogen and methane can both be used as alternatives to fossil fuels in internal combustion engines or for power generation. Like MFCs or bioethanol production plants, MECs have the potential to convert waste organic matter into a valuable energy source. Hydrogen can also be combined with the nitrogen in the air to produce ammonia, which can be used to make ammonium fertilizer. Ammonia has been proposed as a practical alternative to fossil fuel for internal combustion engines. The next topic in the list is energy forestry. Energy forestry is a form of forestry in which a fast growing species of tree or woody shrub is grown specifically to provide biomass or biofuel for heating or power generation. The two forms of energy forestry are short rotation coppice and short rotation forestry. 
short rotation copies may include three crops of poplar willow or eucalyptus grown for 2 to 5 years before harvest these are the fast growing species which grow to full length or full height within a very short time short rotation forestry are crops of elder ash birch eucalyptus poplar and sycamore grown for 8 to 20 years before harvest the main advantage of using grown fuels as opposed to fossil fuels such as coal natural gas and oil is that while they are growing they absorb the near equivalent in carbon dioxide an important greenhouse to that which is later released in their burning in comparison burning fossil fuels release atmospheric carbon unsustainably by using carbon that was added to the earth's carbon sink millions of years ago this is a prime contributor to climate change biomass energy allows no net increase in carbon dioxide to the atmosphere use of waste that would normally go to the landfills can be used for producing energy an estimated 350 million tons of waste that goes to the landfills could be used for energy production this encourages the preservation of agriculture land and would otherwise be sold for development this also encourages sustainable agricultural techniques for bioenergy crops Here in this slide is listed the relative merits of biomass energy. The good about biomass energy is it is a sustainable resource. Human and animal waste is always available as we are always producing the huge amount as a community or as a city. Second, it does not produce sulfur or mercury and releases less nitrogen than coal it is cheap you wouldn't charge a lot for someone taking your rubbish using waste for energy reduces the amount that ends up in a landfill it is user friendly technology anyone could produce biomass energy reducing the need for centralized power The bio oils can also be used for plastics, medicine and other consumer products. The bad part about biomass energy is energy crops take up extra land which could use for farming, conservation and housing. It releases carbon dioxide which needs to be carefully monitored so it doesn't exceed the limit. It is not entirely clean. There is some smell and methane gas released. There is a risk of deforestation and uncontrolled biomass production. Mass production of biomass needs an extensive costly irrigation infrastructure. With current technology, biomass energy is behind fossil fuel in energy efficiency. Now we shall continue to the part 2 of this lecture.